It's Monday, February 8th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and we're following today's snowstorm, which is leading to closings throughout the area. We also have some of the latest local news, including an alleged threat made against Stratford schools, a late Sunday night fire in Milford, and more. Mike Seppi will join us with local sports, including highlights from this past weekend's cheerleading championship. Donald Ang also takes a look back on this day in history coming up later. But first, following today's storm, snow is falling again in southwestern Connecticut and schedules are being affected. New Haven County is under a winter storm warning until 6 p.m. today. The National Weather Service forecasts 4 to 8 inches of snow with winds from the northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. Visibility could be reduced to less than one quarter mile at times according to the National Weather Service and snow could be heavy from morning to early afternoon. We have up a great shot from Waveney Park in New Canaan over the weekend. Uh, our own Brian Hayfully shot that. But in Fairfield and Westchester counties they are under a winter weather advisory until six o'clock with snow starting to fall this morning and the storm arriving uh, from east to west. Accumulations of two to four inches of snow possible according to the Weather Service which warns of the potential for hazardous driving conditions. So be careful and we are hearing from John Kovach that many roads haven't been treated and are slippery right now so everyone should be careful out there. Uh, a winter weather advisory means periods of snow will cause travel difficulties and cautions drivers to be prepared for slippery roads and reduced visibility. Of course, along the Long Island Sound, a coastal flood advisory remains in effect from 10 a.m. this morning to 1 p.m. Forecasters predict tides two to two and one half feet higher than normal at high tide and say minor coastal flooding is possible. According to Jill Dion of the Milford Mirror, who was out and about this morning, while the snow is light in Milford, there were signs of morning flooding. At the harbor, some ducks were swimming on water where there's usually hard surface, and the high tide had sent the water beyond the normal limits. At Silver Sands Beach, the waves, though not huge, were lapping against houses at about 10 a.m., with high tide predicted for about 10.40 a.m. And just to bring you through a list of some of the closings and early dismissals today by town, Amity Regional School District is closed, and Sonia schools are closed today. Bethel schools have an early dismissal. Bridgeport schools are closed early Monday. Colby Cathedral High School will close at noon, and Bullard Havens Tech will also close at noon. Danbury Public Schools have an early dismissal. The Worcester School is closed today, and Western Connecticut State University will close at noon. In Darien, schools will close early, and Pear Tree Point School in Darien will dismiss early as well. Derby schools are closed, and there will be an early dismissal today for all Easton, Reading, and Region 9 schools. Fairfield's public schools will be dismissing early. They just announced that recently. Eagle Hill School in Southport is closed. Fairfield Country Day School will close at noon. Fairfield prep classes are canceled Monday, and the office is open at Unqua School will close early. Milford schools, including Pat Platt Tech, are closed today. In New Canaan, New Canaan Country School closing at 11.30. New Canaan Public Schools and will dismiss at 11.30. And in Newtown, Newtown Public Schools have an early dismissal. Norwalk schools are closing two hours early. The Norwalk Senior Center will close at 1.30 p.m. In Orange, schools are closed Monday. Ridgefield Public Schools are on an early dismissal. Ridgefield Academy also dismissing early. In Seymour, schools are closed. Shelton Public Schools also closed. In Stamford, schools will have an early dismissal. Trinity Catholic High School and Middle School will close early. King Low Haywood Thomas will dismiss early and Villa Maria School will close early. Shafford Public Schools are also closed closing early today along with Trumbull schools closing early. But you can of course get a full update and listing of all the school close it, closures and early dismissals on your HAN network websites. But moving on to some other local news today, patrols at Stratford schools will be increased today as a precaution after police investigated a notice of a possible threat to three town school buildings. Police Lieutenant Frank Iannotti said that Stratford police were contacted at about 9 p.m. Friday about a possible threat to Stratford High School, Worcester Middle School, and Bridgeport's Fairchild Wheeler Magnet School. Police said an 8th grade Worcester student reported a threat in a group message on the social media site Kick. The message was titled, Never Be Afraid to Die. 
Police said 27 children from Stratford and Bridgeport, primarily eighth graders, participated in the group messaging. And in the chat, the children mentioned that there will be a shooting at one of the three schools listed. Police said the intended date was Friday, but was rescheduled for Monday as classes were canceled Friday due to the storm. After an early investigation, Ianati said it was determined that an eighth grader attending Worcester found and reposted an Instagram post concerning a possible school shooting at a school in Manchester, which was a copy of another unfounded threat to a high school in Mayfield, Ohio, that was received on January 28th. Schools in Mayfield were closed that day due to that threat. Ianati said the threat is unsubstantiated and has been going around Instagram and other social media outlets. No direct threats were made by any of the students targeting the schools, but you can follow more on that story at strapstar.com. In Bridgeport, an 87-year-old man was struck and killed by a vehicle during an early morning walk on Saturday. William Frank Godwin of Park Avenue suffered head, chest, and pelvic trauma as the result of the accident, which took place at 6.30 in the morning. He was transported to Bridgeport Hospital, where he died of his injuries, according to Michael Giannotti, the public safety spokesman for Bridgeport Police. Godwin was struck by a Dodge Grand Caravan while on Prospect Street. He was walking in the direction of a shopping center that includes a Dunkin' Donuts directly across from the Troop G State Police Barracks. The operator of the vehicle, Venzinia Cologne, 42 of Atlantic Street, remained at the scene and is cooperating with investigators. There has been no arrest at this time. The accident closed exit one off the southbound Route 825 connector as Bridgeport Police conducted their investigation. And in Milford, at about 1147 Sunday night, Milford Fire Dispatch received a 911 call reporting a structure fire inside a single family residence at 162 Fourth Avenue. No injuries were reported and a cause has yet to be determined. Two occupants were reported to be home at the time of the incident and left the residence safely after discovering the fire. Fire crews made an aggressive interior attack which resulted in a quick knockdown. Extensive fire, smoke and water damage has left the residence uninhabitable. A cause has yet to be determined as Milford Fire Marshal divisions continue their investigation. And according to the Stratford Star, former Sikorsky aircraft president Jeffrey Pino was one of two people killed Friday in a plane crash in Arizona. According to the Pino County, Arizona Sheriff's Office, Pino, who's 61 of Chandler, Arizona, and Brookfield resident Nicholas Tramatano, 72, were aboard a World War II era plane that crashed on Friday in Maricopa, Arizona. The cause is still under investigation. Pino served as president of Sikorsky Aircraft, Stratford's largest employer from 2006 to 2012. He last worked at XTI Aircraft based in Colorado. Sikorsky noted Pino's death on its website, sending condolences to his family. And there were some accidents Friday night when dropping temperatures led to icy conditions. According to a resident who emailed the New Canaan Advertiser Saturday morning, his wife slipped and fell on black ice on a walkway at the New Canaan Railroad parking lot Friday evening. The woman apparently broke her leg and was going into surgery over the weekend. The railroad lot is property of the town of New Canaan. And another resident sent in a photo taken Saturday morning at 815 of a vehicle that apparently driven off a Seminary Street residence driveway behind Carl Chevrolet either Friday night or early Saturday morning. But you can get more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. We're going to step out for a break. We're still following and tracking this storm happening right now. It's snowing again in southwestern Connecticut, but we'll be back. We have Mike Suppy joining us with sports. Donald Ang will take a look back at in this day in history. And we have a lot more coming up after this. Had a sports injury that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist quickly. Their highly trained orthopedic professionals expertly treat you without an appointment. Skiing, snowboard, or sports accident, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk. Call 203-845-2070 or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Find them on Facebook at Coastal Ortho CT. Darien Sports Shop is a unique store because it's a family store. A busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, 
Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariansport.com. It's the new year. The to-do list is long and it's easy to feel pulled in many directions at once. Your professional, personal shoppers at Walter Stewart's are ready to check groceries off your list by shopping for you. Save extra time this year and spend it doing more important things. Great food and wine delivered to your home with the same day service. Shop Stewart's online at stewartsmarket.com. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the women. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng, and we're the home team for Nutmeg Sports Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports, so come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock Monday through Wednesday right here on the HAN Network. We're back on this Monday, February 8th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. That's a look outside our Shelton studio right now as the snow continues to fall. New Haven County is under a winter storm warning until 6 o'clock today. The National Weather Service forecasting 4 to 8 inches of snow. Visibility could be reduced to less than one quarter mile at a time. Snow could be heavy from morning to early afternoon. And Fairfield and Westchester counties are under a winter weathery advisory until 6 with snow starting to fall this morning. Uh, accumulations of 2 to 4 inches are possible. Gusting winds are also a concern and we are hearing that roads are very slippery at this time. Now, I know our own John Kovach was out along the shoreline today in Fairfield. He was at St. Mary's by the sea and along Long Island Sound, a coastal flood advisory remains in effect from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Forecasters predict tides two to two and one half feet higher than normal at high tide time and say that some minor flooding is possible, which we saw a bit of uh, in Milford, thanks to Jill Dion's photos that she provided earlier. Earlier. But we're going to keep an eye on things. You can also get updates at your HAN Network websites. It's time now to throw it over to Donald Ang, who's live in studio, to take a look back on this day in history. Don? Well, Kate, it was an all-time media mea culpa. But first, we go all the way back to 1587. Mary, Queen of Scots, executed on suspicion of having been involved in the Babington plot to murder her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I. Mary was the only surviving legitimate child of King James V of Scotland and was six days old when her father died in 1542. She spent most of her childhood in France while Scotland was ruled by regents in 1558. At age 16, she married the Dauphin of France, Francis. He became King of France in 1559, then died the following year, leaving 18-year-old Mary widowed. She returned to Scotland and married her first cousin, Henry Stuart, the Lord Darnley. But six years later, his house burned down and he was found murdered inside. James Hepburn was generally believed to have orchestrated his death, but he was acquitted of the charge and then married married Mary the following month. Later that year, she abdicated in favor of James, her one-year-old son by Darnley. She sought protection from her cousin Elizabeth, but perceiving her as a threat, Elizabeth had her confined uh, in the interior of England. After 18 and a half years in custody, Mary was, was executed for plotting to assassinate Elizabeth. To 1910 we go, the Boy Scouts of America incorporated by William Boyce. Since its founding as part of the International Scout Movement, more than 110 million Americans have at some point been members of the Boy Scouts of America. 1915, D.W. Griffith's controversial film, The Birth of a Nation, premieres in Los Angeles. The film chronicles the relationship of two families in the American Civil War and Reconstruction era, the Northern Stonemans and the Southern Confederate Camerons. Over the course of several years, the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln also dramatized. The film was successful, though highly controversial, due to its portrayal of black men, portrayed by white actors in blackface, as unintelligent and sexually aggressive, and the portrayal of Ku Klux Klan's members as a heroic force protecting white women from black men. Birth of a Nation, 1915. And finally, now we go to 1993 for this. NBC's contractor did put incendiary devices under the trucks 
to ensure that there would be a fire if gasoline were released from the truck's gas tank. We said the crash, quote, forced gasoline to spew from the fuel cap, end quote. GM says since the gas cap was the wrong cap for the GM filler tube and because the gas tank was overfilled, the cap came off when the impact occurred. We agree with GM that we should have told our viewers about these devices. The Dateline reporter, however, said, quote, at impact, a small hole was punctured in the tank, unquote. GM has now x-rayed that tank and found no hole. We acknowledge the placing of the incendiary devices under the truck was a bad idea from start to finish. That's our new policy, and we'll be right back. A bad idea from start to finish. After Dateline NBC had run a story that the General Motors C and K series pickup trucks were unsafe and would, and would uh, burn if side impacted, it later came out that GM had, uh, that Dateline had rigged the trucks with an incendiary device, put an incorrect gas cap on the fuel tank, and then overfilled the fuel tank to guarantee a fire and an explosion. NBC settled the lawsuit the next day. That is your look back in history, and I am Donald Ng. All right, thanks so much, Don. Well, getting back to a little more news today. A multi-jurisdictional task force involving Milford, Strafford, Orange, Shelton, and Trumbull Police Departments announced on Friday the arrest of 56-year-old Tanya Abdur-Rahim of Strafford for alleged involvement in a scheme to resell stolen jewelry. Police launched an investigation after a series of burglaries in Fairfield and New Haven counties during November 2015. Their investigation revealed that a burglary suspect had sold jewelry stolen from a residence in Milford to Abdur Rahim, who was advertising that she purchased gold. Police said that Abdur Rahim was purchasing the stolen jewelry without a required precious metal license and was then selling the jewelry to a pawn shop in Bridgeport. Abdur Rahim is charged with precious metal violation and fifth degree larceny. She's scheduled to appear in court on March 1st. Police say their investigators were able to recover several pieces of jewelry from the Bridgeport pawn shop for the homeowner whose house was burglarized. But it's time now to throw it over to Mike Suppy, who is filling in at the sports desk today. Mike, how's it going? Good, Kate. Thanks a lot. Well, with much of the Friday slate pushed to Saturday, we'll start with boys basketball. In the FCAC, Danbury clipped Trinity Catholic 61-55. Stanford edged Ward 57-51. Ridgefield held off St. Joseph 65-63. It was Darian trimming Staples 53-48. And McMahon upending Norwalk 82-70. In the SEC, Shelton High qualified for the postseason with a 64-44 SEC Housatonic Division win over Sheehan. It was a seventh loss in a row for the Titans. Fairfield Prep took down West Haven 69-52, while Notre Dame of West Haven beat Amity 54-46. In the SWC, Massachai dropped an overtime decision to Pomperog and Southbury by a 56-65 count. Cameron Kovacic had 21 points, while Joe Porticelli added 14 for Massac, which dropped to 6-9. Pomperog improved to 12 and 3 overall. In girls basketball, Trumbull High trumped Wilton 35 to 27. It was Ridgefield rolling over St. Joseph 64 to 48. Norwalk routed McMahon 65 to 25. In the SEC, the Shelton High girls basketball team scored its most points in 33 games in handing Lyman Hall a 59 to 47 defeat in Wallingford. The 59 points scored by the Galettes is their biggest offensive output since they beat Hyde 62 to 8 back on December 27, 2014. Over onto the ice in boys ice hockey, it was Newtown earning a 5-3 win over Trumbull High. Stanford West Hill shot out Norwalk McMahon 9-0. New Canaan iced St. Joseph's 4-1, while Fairfield slammed Trinity Catholic 9-2. In girls ice hockey, it was Norwalk Wilton 4, Fairfield 1, Ridgefield 3, Greenwich 2, and New Canaan 5, Trumbull 0. Moving over to the mat, Danbury High won the new Fairfield Duels with many of the state's top-ranked teams in attendance, ringing up impressive victories over Londonderry, New Hampshire, New Fairfield, Nonawag, and New Milford. Foreign went 5-0 to set a new state record for most dual meet wins in a season. The Lions are now 34-3 on the year, beating the previous record of most dual meet wins held by Crosstown rivals Jonathan Law in 2007. Platt of Meriden won the Jonathan Law Invitational, holding off Shelton High, while Ridgefield was third and Darien placed ninth. Over in the NVL, it was Buster Jaddick, Derby High's legendary coach, earning his 600th career victory thanks to a pair of wins from the Raiders on Saturday. In cheerleading, in a meet featured here on the HAN Network, Fairfield Ludlow won the FCAC Grand and Girls Cheer Championships, while Stanford won the co-ed crown.
And finally, a programming note from tonight. The Laurelton Hall Trumbull Girls Ice Hockey game, scheduled to be broadcast here on the HAN Network, has been postponed. No makeup date has been announced. Many postponements across the state. Keep checking the websites. And um, pretty much everything has been wiped out on the schedule tonight. And then with sports, I'm Mike Suppy. All right, thanks so much, Mike. Well, we're going to step out for a break. When we come back, we're following this storm as it uh, moves through the area. Another snowstorm. And we have some more news coming up on your coffee break after this. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. Healthy, confident smiles begin at Stratford Orthodontics. Conveniently located on Main Street, we are Stratford's hometown orthodontist. We offer the latest in orthodontic technology, including Damon braces and Invisalign. We always accept new patients. Call today to schedule a complimentary consultation. 203-375-8332. Stratford Orthodontics, 2499 Main Street, Stratford. 203-375-8332. And online at StraffordSmile.com. Find over a thousand special stories at Hospital for Special Surgery. Go to hss.edu slash back in the game. I was jogging five months after my cartilage tear. Skiing a year after hip surgery. And playing grandma four weeks after hip replacement. One special hospital, a thousand special stories. See Connecticut patients at hss.edu slash ct. I'm John Kovac. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune into Yankee Fisherman Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcast in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. And we're back on this Monday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplensky. Snow is falling, as you can see, and is expected to fall throughout southwestern Connecticut throughout much of the afternoon. New Haven County under a winter storm warning until 6 o'clock. The National Weather Service forecasting 4 to 8 inches. Fairfield and Westchester counties under a winter weather advisory until 6. Accumulations of 2 to 4 inches possible. Gusting winds are also a concern. And we're hearing that roads are very slippery currently. As you can see, that's a shot in Milford of some coastal flooding, which is expected uh, due to the storm. And SWCT weather reporting that the steadiest snow is likely to happen from now until 2 to 3 p.m. And as we said, we have seen some coastal flooding in Fairfield and Milford with some reporters we've had out on the scene. So everyone stay safe. Roads are slippery. But moving on to some other news today, those looking to grab some quick Mexican food for lunch will have to go elsewhere today, February 8th, as Chipotle is scheduled to close all of their locations from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. for a safety meeting. The company said it will share information about what it believes to have caused the E. coli outbreak late last year and what it's doing to prevent more and thank its workers for implementing new food safety procedures. 
Following the reports of the outbreak late in 2015, the chain restaurant has chosen to change some of its cooking techniques to lessen the chance of another outbreak. According to a Chicago Tribune article, Chipotle's onions will be dipped in boiling water to kill germs before they're chopped. Raw chicken will be marinated in resealable plastic bags rather than in bowls. And cilantro will be added to freshly cooked rice so the heat gets rid of microbes in the garnish. Shelton's first Chipotle arrived late last year, shortly before the outbreak was reported. Updates on how the outbreak and closing will affect the business are to come. You can follow those at sheltonherald.com. And Matthew Egan, a freshman at Weston High School, was upset to learn that teachers at Cesar Battaglia School in Bridgeport receive only $30 toward school supplies for their classrooms, so he decided to set up an event to help fix that. February is Love a Classroom Month, and students and community members are asking to donate new or gently used school supplies that a teacher or student can use. In addition to spearheading the drive, Matthew, who is a Weston High School varsity soccer goalie, is offering goalie lessons to any youth soccer player for $25 an hour, with all proceeds going to the Caesar Battaglia School. And you can get more information on his drive at thewestonforum.com. And New Canaan Country School alumnus Matthew Hinneman has been nominated for an Oscar for Best Documentary for his latest film, Cartel Land. The film is an on-the-ground look at the journeys of two modern-day vigilante groups and their shared enemy, the Mexican drug cartels. The film premiered in the U.S. documentary competition at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival, where Hinneman won Best Director Award and Special Jury Prize for Cinematography. The film was released theatrically nationwide by by The Orchard in July 2015 and had its broadcast premiere on A&E in January 2016. It was recently nominated for a Gotham's Awards Critics' Choice and a BAFTA Award for Best Documentary. Heinemann received the Courage Under Fire Award from the International Documentary Association in recognition of conspicuous bravery in the pursuit of the truth. He was also named one of Foreign Policy Magazine's 100 Leading Global Thinkers of 2015. Heinemann, who grew up in Fairfield County, received Country School's 2012 Alumni Award after the release of his first feature-length documentary. But you can get more on that at ncadvertiser.com. And attention all dog lovers, Little Black Dog Rescue is holding an adoption event on Sunday, February 14th, that's right, on Valentine's Day, from noon to 3 at Earth Animal 606 Post Road, Westport. You can meet founder Amy Scarella and adopt a rescue dog she has taken care of and trained and that is ready for a forever home. Fosters are always needed too. There will be treats, t-shirts, and plenty of little black dogs on display. Hope Hopefully all wearing that amazing heart but we are uh, as well we're still following the storm outside as you can see the snow is blanketing the area as we mentioned earlier New Haven New Haven County under a winter storm warning until 6. The National Weather Service predicting 4 to 8 inches. Fairfield and Westchester counties are under a winter weather advisory until 6. Accumulations of 2 to 4 inches possible. It is windy out there. Gusting winds are a concern. And roads are slippery right now. It's led to a lot of closures and early dismissals, which you can follow at all of your HAN network websites. But that's going to do it for this edition of your Coffee Break coming up at 2 today. Nutmeg Sports, check that out. And of course, Coffee Break will be back tomorrow at 11. Have a great day, everyone.